What's up guys, Waldy Salamander back, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'll be giving you guys tips and tricks to skiing the famed Mammoth Mountain, so without further ado, let's jump in. The number one thing to know about Mammoth is that it gets crowded. Being the closest large destination resort to the second largest city in the country, Mammoth is home to lift lines that live up to its name. This, however, does not mean that waiting in lines is inevitable on your peak day or weekend trip to Mammoth, and I will be sharing some secrets on how to avoid lines and hit the best runs. Mammoth has four bases at which to start your day. Eagle Lodge, Canyon Lodge, The Mill, and Main Lodge. Each of these areas has free parking, but the spots fill up fast, so you'll want to get there at least 15 minutes before the lifts open to get a good spot. There's also a tiny parking lot at the base of Roller Coaster Express and Chair 20. If you don't plan on parking at the resort, there's a large village home to the Village Gondola, which drops you off at Canyon Lodge. We'll start at Eagle Lodge, which is home to one high-speed six-pack that gives access to some of the most hospitable greens on the mountain. The southeast aspect of this area makes it perennially sunny and warm. Beginners will want to lap Holiday to Pumpkin and Sleepy Hollow. Additionally, the Blues Water Tank and Manzanita are easiest on the mountain and could easily pass as green blacks. The Eagle Express draws large lines and isn't ideal for lapping on a peak day. It gives access to Chair 25 and Cloud 9 Express as well as Canyon Lodge and Chair 22, but more on those later. For intermediate and advanced skiers, head to Cloud 9 Express for some of the best blue cruisers. Gold Hill, Back for More, and Haven't the Foggiest are the best groomed blues over here, and Quicksilver is a good opportunity for intermediate glades. Slaw is a very fun natural halfpipe that you'll access by sticking to the skier's right of Gold Hill, but be aware, it gets icy and crowded, so hit it in the morning. For the biggest moguls on the mountain, take a left off of Cloud9 Express and hit Ricochet. Ricochet is home to one of Mammoth's only real endurance runs. It is riddled with gigantic moguls and it's very long. You can also access Dragon's Tail from Cloud9 Express, but it takes a 15 to 20 minute traverse on a truly treacherous ridge that runs directly across the precipitously pitched wazoo. More on how to access this area later. Avoid Chair 25 at all costs. It's a 10 minute ride and doesn't access any terrain that you can't access from another lift. Sunshine Glades is the run I recommend least on the entire mountain. It is icy all day, every day. It can even be icy the day after a large powder dump. Additionally, Sunshine Glades is long, and it can be hard to bail onto back for more, in case you get tired. Now onto the canyon area. Canyon Lodge is home to four out-of-base lifts, Chair 8, Canyon Express, Schoolyard Express, and Chair 7. Chair 8 is good for convenient access to the Eagle area and Chair 22, as well as servicing some blue mogul runs such as Redtail and Red Wing. Blue, Day, blue Jay is a short and steep black where you can get serious speed if you aren't careful. I consistently go out of my way to bomb Blue Jay because of these traits. Canyon Express is the main out-of-base lift for Canyon Lodge and provides essential egress to the west side of the mountain. It was recently converted to a six-pack, but still sees insane lines throughout the whole day. Avoid ending up at Canyon Lodge in the middle of a peak day if you plan on leaving it soon. Lines are regularly upwards of 15 to 20 minutes here. However, on peak weekdays with lower crowds, there are highly enjoyable mogul blacks near the lift such as Axe 1, 2, and 3 and Encore. Off of Follow Me, a glorified flat traverse, you can get to Lower Grizzly, Viva, and Shaft, some of the more mogul blacks. You won't find any good mogul blacks elsewhere on the mountain besides Ricochet, so if moguls are your thing, go to Colorado. Next, we have School Marm. <coughs> Sorry, did I say School Marm? I meant School Yard, the School Marm of Mammoth. Okay, enough ragging on School Yard. School Yard Express is actually an enjoyable beginner lift. It has two main ways to get down, Roundabout and Spring Canyon. I suggest always taking Spring Canyon because Roundabout gets extremely congested with beginner traffic. Off of Spring Canyon, there are numerous easy tree lines that are great for beginners and experts alike. Alligator Pit or Huck's Drop is the most common one, but there are plenty of other unnamed lines to hit. These woods are perfect for beginners who are learning to ski trees. The problem occurs when Spring Canyon and Roundabout converge onto the wide open schoolyard run. This creates more of a human dodgeball scenario than a bunny slope, and I highly recommend going right at this fork where you can re-enter the Schoolyard Express line or the Canyon Express line. Last, we have the painfully slow Chair 7. Chair 7 serves mostly as a bunny slope lift. Schoolyard Express can get pretty backed up, so if you don't want to wait in line but still want to hit these greens, take Chair 7. Just be aware that the time you save by skipping the line will be made up by a 6.5 minute ride time. The best thing about Chair 7 is the Wonderland Playground. This is a beginner terrain park that actually has some really creative features such as domes, boxes, rails, and in previous years an 8-foot halfpipe. As someone who mostly sticks to shoots, bowls, and trees, when I do decide to do some park, I always come here. Accessible from all Eagle Side lifts, Chair 8 and Canyon Express, Chair 22 is Mammoth's hidden gem. 
This lift is an expert's paradise, and I've never waited in the line longer than a minute here. It's, it is hidden in the trees, so you'll have to look for it, but there is signage. Chair 22 is the perfect chair for when the upper mountain is closed due to wind, which it will be. All of the double blacks here are also directly lappable by this chair, which makes it for fast, efficient laps. The hardest of the double blacks on Lincoln Mountain are avalanche chutes, comprising of Abbey 1, Abbey 2, and Abbey 3, as well as some unnamed runs like Sneaker Left and Sneaker Right. The easiest of these three is Abbey 3, and the hardest is Abbey 1. They are all very steep, narrow, rock divine chutes with saplings sticking out everywhere. All double blacks at Mammoth, with the exception of one, which I'll get to later, should be, ex should be attempted with extreme caution and forethought. Next we have Shaft, the hardest of the three runs designated as the face runs by on-mountain signage. Yes, you'll have to know which one you're doing because they aren't distinguished by individual signs. Mammoth, Mammoth has very poor extreme terrain signage. Shaft is a relatively long, narrow, tree-cut mogul run with a rock shoot halfway down. It is a little steeper and a little narrower than Grizzly and Viva, which are similar but lack the rock shoot. Now onto Roller Coaster. Roller Coaster is served by two lifts, Roller Coaster Express and Chair 20. Chair 20 almost never runs and is only used as a way to get to the mill when Roller Coaster is busy. In my eight seasons skiing at Mammoth, I've ridden Chair 20 fewer than five times. Roller Coaster Express is mainly used as a park lift. Right beneath it is great terrain called South Park. It has jumps ranging from median to huge and some gnarly rails. The groomed blue-black roller coaster is a favorite among intermediate skiers and is a great place to lay down carves on the corduroy and watch crazy people hurl themselves off house-sized jumps. On to the mill. The mill is Mammoth's biggest choke point. If you plan on going from the east side of the mountain to the west side of the mountain, you must take Stump Alley. Stump Alley generally gets longer lines than Gold Rush, but 30 or more weights at either, though rare, are not out of question. This is where the video comes in handy. There is a way to skip the mill to go from east to west, and that is to take the unnamed traverse that goes from Cloud 9 Express all the way to Facelift Express. It is a little bit uphill when you pass Dry Creek, but if you keep your speed, you can get across without skating or pushing. This allows you to get to the Gondola Midstation or the bottom of Facelift Express, which together access the entire western footprint of the resort. There isn't much to be said about the runs that feed into the mill. They are typically tree-cut groomed runs that are fun to lap if the lines aren't bad. The only exception is Lower Dry Creek, a really fun and long natural halfpipe that winds through the canyon. Gold Rush Express mainly serves as egress from west to east and isn't a chair you'd typically want to lap either. If Gold Rush has a long line, go as far to the east as possible from the mill and you'll see Chair 21. I've only seen a line of this lift once and that's when Gold Rush Express broke down. Other than that, you'll be able to ski right onto Chair 21. Now let's get to High Five Express. This lift has most enjoyable single black diamond high alpine bull terrain. It typically doesn't see long lines and has a ride time of three and a half minutes. Advanced skiers will want to lap face of five, sanctuary, sliver, and triangle. Note, solitude is the least solitary run on the mountain. Facelift Express can see lines, but is generally fine. It has some great blue runs like uh, a center and east bull. West bull is a great black mogul run. This double black diamond, Walters, is the only double black diamond on the mountain that isn't risky or even that difficult. If you can confidently ride most single blacks at Mammoth, Walter should be a piece of cake for you. It's very steep, but so short that after three runs, or, or sorry, it's very steep, but so short that after three turns, you'll be done with the hard part. Now we'll cover Main Lodge. Unbound Express is strictly a park lift. It's hard to actually get anywhere from this lift besides the train parks. Main Park has a mixture of very large jumps, rails, jibs, and a 22-foot superpipe. Forest Trail is a toned-down version of that. Broadway Express is one of the best lifts for advanced skiers. It has several steep black groomers as well as Gravy Chute, a steep narrow chute with action figures glued to the rocks. Gravy Chute is hard, so you'll want to be comfortable with the other single blacks on the mountain before attempting it. Below Gravy Chute is Glades, a steep, wide space a steep, below Gravy Chute is Glades, a steep, widely spaced glade run. Broadway Express also gives easy access to the upper panorama gondola and chair 23. Discovery Express is a short beginner lift that's comparable to Chair 7, but much faster. It has a beginner park like Wonderland, but slightly worse in my opinion. Chair 12 is, is directly accessible from Discovery Express, but it's hard to find. Stick to your right as far as possible. Chair 12 is the place to be on a powder day if you're an intermediate skier. All these runs are mellow, and you can get fresh tracks here for hours. It also gives access to the backside and outpost 14. At the outpost, there are two double chairs. Both chairlifts serve mostly blue groomers, but chair 14 also gives great access to some frontside extremes. Ariba is the best run for intermediates looking for a groomed wide open bowl. If you stick to your far left when coming down Roadrunner from chair 14, you'll hit Red's Lake Run on the ski boundary. 
Stick to the boundary and, and you'll get to Santiago Bowl, one of the steepest single blocks on the mountain. Santiago Bowl almost never gets ridden, but it can get windswept and icy. If you keep to the far left of Santiago Bowl, you'll hit a groomed hike that takes you to the hemlocks. The hike takes about 10 minutes and leads to some truly insane lines through trees and cliffs. On good snow years, the park crew builds kickers on the trees that stick out of the run. The outpost also has the best directly on mountain food, with really good grilled cheese and soups. Now we'll talk about the summit. The summit is home to the hardest runs on the mountain. It can be accessed by the Panorama Gondola, which also has a mid-station at the base of Facelift, Facelift Express. Most runs will be on the west side of the summit. Climax is one of the most wide open bowls at any resort and develops moguls if it hasn't snowed in a few days. First tracks on Climax is one of the best experiences you'll get. Hangman's is an hourglass shaped shoot with over 45 degree pitches. MJB's is, the only, is only open on great snow years and is a super short steep drop. Cornus Bowl is Mammoth's signature run. Everybody does it, including many who are not ready for it. It gets very congested. These next runs are all serviced by Chair 23 as well, and I recommend taking it instead of the gondola to access them. Wipeout and Dropout are long, steep shoots. Scotty's is just like Cornus Bowl without the human dodgeball element. Do Scotty's instead. Monument is a super steep and long bowl. After Monument, you'll walk uphill a tiny bit to get to the Paranoids. They are some of the steepest inbound runs in the country, being upwards of 45 degrees at the top. They get progressively harder as you go from P1, P2, P3, P4, and Mini P4. They all require drop-ins and have creep cracks. However, they mellow out to the steepness of a standard double black about halfway down. If you take P4 and go up to the saddle here, you'll look down on Philippe's, a precipitously narrow, rock-lined chute with a choke point. It's about as steep as Paranoid Flats. Now we get to the hardest run on the mountain. It has been ranked among the hardest ski runs in the world. I've never personally done this, but I can link a video of it in, this, in the description. If you get to Kiwi Flats by taking off your skis and walking past the entry to Mini P4, there you'll see a 600-foot couloir with a cliff in the middle of it at over 50 degrees. On the other side of the gondola, there's, there's Huevos Grande, a very hard-to-find run akin to Hangman's Hollow. Hike up and you'll get to Dave's Run, a steep, ungroomed single black that's the hardest on the mountain. And you'll stick to the boundary rope and then get to the top of head shoots. Head shoots are all over 50 degrees and extremely narrow, but they're only about 100 feet long at the longest. Keep traversing to get out of Dragon's Back, a series of four shoots that are mellower than head shoots. Then you'll get to Wazoo, the best expert glade run on the mountain with some little shoots to drop into at the top. Keep going and traverse will flatten out. You'll be at the tree line now, but you just keep going until you're about parallel with Cloud9 Express. Almost nobody goes this far because it takes 20 minutes of ridgeline traversing to get to, but the powder stays untouched here for days, even weeks, if it has been that long since the storm. It's extremely steep and covered in trees, making it one of the hardest runs at Mammoth, but it's 100% worth it for the tenured expert. For the last part, I'll cover some areas that I skipped over. Behind McCoy Station, you'll find a blue run called Knee Deep that leads into a wide open bowl, Rogers Ridge. This is a very rarely ridden run because of how out of the way it is. Keep going down knee deep to find patterns, a series of short, steep shoots designated by an inconspicuous experts only sign. Keep going to find drop 18, a relatively uninteresting short black diamond. There's also a ski back trail that leads to the village, but it's very flat and some sections and not worth lapping, which should be obvious. Thanks for watching. Did I miss anything? If you like this kind of content, let me know in the comments. See you for the next one.